Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 9. Today we're going to be talking about an interview that was done with the showrunner of The Flash, Eric Wallace, just as the finale was coming out. We haven't actually talked about this in any videos, it teases Season 9, talks a little bit about the way that they went around ending Season 8. And so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so The Flash Season 8 has officially ended. Now we're preparing for Season 9. They haven't started shooting Season 9. I don't know exactly when they are planning to start, but there was one big change that is coming in Season 9 that was announced recently, and that is the fact that The Flash isn't going to be airing in the fall, so it's not going to be premiering Episode 1 in October, but instead it's going to be airing Episode 1 in the mid-season. That means probably around January time, that's when we're going to be seeing the first episode of Season 9, so it gives them some more time to plan the season, gives some more time for the cast and crew to actually rest while they prepare for the shoot whenever it starts again, and obviously when they start shooting Season 9 and when the first details come out, of course we're going to be covering it, so please be sure to stick around and turn on that notification to not miss any videos. But today we're going to be breaking down this article that Eric Wallace did with Deadline. It's an interview and this is how the first question goes and like I said before it's about season 9 and about the end of season 8. We're going to be going through pretty much most of the questions. So Deadline asks, when did the idea for the Flash season 8's finale crystallize? Eric Wallace replies, this is a finale that I have literally been driving to for several years. The original idea for the final battle between negative and positive forces came two years ago to him. When we decided to birth the positive forces way back at the end of season 6 and the top of season 7, so it's been building this whole time and we've been dropping little clues like we did for example at the end of season 7 when Speed Force Nora said, hey I just discovered negative forces. I didn't even know they existed. That was us giving you a heads up about what was to come. So in response to this, I would say I don't know if I entirely trust that Eric came up with this finale a couple of years ago. Like, they had the complete idea and, you know, the original battle about negative and positive forces coming two years ago. I understand that when, you know, you introduce the positive forces, you think of negative because positive and negative goes together. However, I don't think this has all been mapped out for such a long time and I don't think they knew specifically oh, it would be the season 8 finale rather than the season 7 finale or something like that. So, I don't know if I truly believe that, but I believe that Eric has had this idea in his head since he had the positive forces. Maybe he was like, oh yeah, I want to bring the negative forces because that only makes sense. But let's move on to the next question. So, Deadline says, were there any alternative facets to the finale? Ideas you explored that didn't wind up being reflected in the final cut? Well, I said no, it pretty much came out exactly as planned. The only thing that's different is we weren't sure how many episodes we would have in Season 8. We weren't sure if this was going to be our last season or not when we were originally driving towards it. When you watch this episode, there's things about it that are really final, you know. This final battle between Barry and Thorn, that's because it was originally written as a potential series finale, so I think that it hopefully gives some weight and drama to the fact that okay, this is really is the final battle between the Flash and Negative Reverse Flash. So this is something that Eric has been saying in many interviews. He's been saying he wasn't sure about the fate of the Flash and he didn't know if they would get another season, which I find kind of a little bit unbelievable because it's one of the best shows on the CW. It does the best of them, so why would they want to end the show? I understand that maybe he was kind of questioning whether Grant would stick around and the other actors so maybe it wasn't possible to create another season without them and it still be The Flash, so I understand that. But he's been really hammering in the fact that he didn't know if this would be a series finale or a season finale, and so he tried to make some things final. In my opinion, I understand the Barry and Thorn bit being final, but apart from that, it didn't really feel like a series finale. It didn't really wrap up too much in terms of the broader scope of things, However, it did wrap up 
what happened in this season, you know, Iris's time sickness and everything like that. Next question, Deadline says, that being said, are we really done with Reverse Flash? Wallace says, at this point, yes. The negative Reverse Flash, just like Frost, is dead. Dot, dot, dot. Now, having said that, we've got another season, and I wasn't expecting that. I'm very happy about it, but just because the negative Reverse Flash is dead doesn't mean that Tom Kavanagh might not pop up on the show in some capacity in Season 9. I think I can say that without giving any spoilers away. Okay, so obviously there's a chance that Tom could return because he is a fan favourite, they love working with Tom on the set it seems, and Reverse Flash is never really dead when you come to actually look at it from an outside perspective. And I thought it was interesting that he mentions like Frost is dead and then they put dot 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 which is very interesting because obviously we got the cliffhanger with Caitlyn at the end of the season and it's led lots of people to believe that maybe we're going to see like an altered version of Frost or an altered version of Caitlyn so I think that is him actually teasing that as well so there is always a chance that Reverse Flash is going to return and he's teasing it right here Tom Kavanagh could show up in the next season but I don't think they have any plans as of right now but maybe it's going to happen Okay, so Deadline goes on to say, A few cliffhangers are presented in the final moments of Season 8, after Barry and Iris hint that the negative forces will need to choose a new avatar going forward. Mark Blaine is met with an unseen character emerging from his consciousness resurrection chamber. What can you tell us about what you set up here? So Wallace says there's two separate things here. I'll answer the first thing first, which is negative speed force avatar. Yeah, it's funny. It says in the episode, as Dion has been pointing out all the way back from episode 15 of season 8, there has to be a balance in the universe, which means there must be a negative speed force avatar, and since we just saw one die, I'm pretty sure that the negative force is going to have to come up with a new one. The question is, who will that be? Stay tuned. I'm pretty sure you'll get the answer sooner rather than later. So with this answer from Eric, it actually seems like they are probably going to be leading towards revealing that negative speed force avatar. He doesn't hint as to if it's going to be a big deal or not. So it could be something that is just briefly referred to, maybe when we see negative forces again. But at the same time, it could be big. We never know. So the second part of Eric's answer is this in response to the chill blame part of the question. So the next thing is, what's in the box, right? And he laughs. Obviously, that's a seven reference there. Oh, I'm not going to tell you that. He says, tune in for season nine and you will find out immediately what's in the box. The big clue as to what's in the box is the voice that is Daniel Panabaker's voice. So some version of Daniel Panabaker is coming out of that box. The question is, which one? Let the debate begin because there's many ways to go. So this is very exciting. So we're going to get the answer to this cliffhanger immediately, he says, at the start of season nine. So that means episode one, we're going to find out exactly what's going on there. And he does confirm it's a version of Daniel Panabaker's characters. So it could be Frost. It could be Caitlyn, or it could be something in between, and that is my guess as of right now, that they've somehow kind of merged. But let's move on to the next question. Deadline says, we also learn in the season finale that Cecile now has a new superpower. Tell us about that. Wallace says, Cecile got telekinesis. We saw that cup fly into her hand since we gave her all these superpowers and then took them away because she helped the side of good, we wanted to make sure that she got a little reward for that and so we gave her a brand new power. So in addition to all the wonderful mental powers that she's always had in season 6, 7, 8 and in season 9, she will also have to grow her telekinetic abilities. It's very exciting. So yeah, Cecile is going to be using telekinesis this next season. This is going to be one of her new powers that she's going to be using. This was very much so out of nowhere in the season finale that that cup literally went flying into her hand. I have to say, I think it's a little bit over the top. I think it's a bit ridiculous how many powers they keep on giving Cecile. I feel like out of anyone, she is the person who has been upgraded the most because at the start, it was just due to her pregnancy that they gave her kind of powers, you know, mind-related powers. And then episode by episode, she would become more powerful. And even recently, she was able to steal people's powers which was, you know, interesting, but at the same time, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right. Like, with everything that's going on with Cecile, 
I feel her powers are just there to be a plot device. Normally she's reading people's minds and she's basically explaining to us viewers their emotions and what they're feeling rather than letting us actually think about that because there is no moments of silence because of her powers. She is just always intrusively reading people's minds and so they never have time to think because the seal literally just says it out loud. And so I just don't like where that is and I don't think that is a good device to actually use for a TV show like The Flash or any TV show in general because you don't want to be explained too much. That's just my personal opinion. And so I guess the telekinetic abilities are a bit more exciting for me than the mind control abilities because telekinetic abilities is actually a physical thing as you saw. She was able to basically use the force and get the cup in her hand at the end of season 8. So it's more of a physical thing rather than a mental thing where she's reading people's minds. So maybe her mental powers take a little bit of a backseat. I would like that because I feel like that is the biggest problem with Cecile's character right now. And so maybe this telekinetic addition could be something good for the character. Okay, Deadline says, what can you tell us as far as who will appear in Season 9? Any big new villains? Eric Wallace replies, I'm now going into the third season of The Flash where I don't know whether or not it's the last right. So I did this at the end of Season 7 and then I got Season 8 and then I did it at the end of Season 8 and then I got a 9. Now I'm doing it in Season 9 and I hope I get a 10 but just in case get ready for some very familiar old faces, villains from the past throughout the entire 8 years of the series. You're going to see some old faces coming back, you're going to have some fun including some very very big fan favourites. Now this is very exciting because this is him confirming that yes we will be seeing characters in the past and probably some big villains from the past and so those old faces who have appeared in the entire eight years of the series is probably going to include characters like Zoom and I say Zoom only because Eric Wallace is a big fan of Zoom and he teased it a little bit in season 8 with the newspaper article Zoom and Godspeed so I reckon at one point we're going to be seeing maybe someone like Zoom coming back, some people from the past, whether they're good or bad, and he is treating Season 9 like he did last season, basically hoping he's going to get a Season 10, but in the meantime, planning for it to be the last season just in case. Okay, the next question is, while Jesse L. Martin's exit as a series regular was announced back in April, we've heard that he'll be back in Season 9, but how exactly will he figure into the story? Will he be coming on for a few episodes early in the season? To wrap up loose ends, Eric replies, well, again, I don't know if this is my last season or not, so we do have a specific story for Jesse that relates to Joe, Cecile, and their family. That's what happened right out of the gate in the season, and we'll kind of just play it by year, but we don't want Jesse to disappear from the show just because you're only in five episodes. There's a way to have him be in the part of the show and keep the character alive, just in case he wants to come back, frankly. So it seems they do have a plan for Jesse, and apparently according to Eric Wallace, he's going to have a big story at the start of the season to do with the family, and then he's supposedly going to be in five episodes for this whole season, which is substantially lower than normal, and we are presuming that The Flash Season 9 is going to have 20 episodes in this season, just like they did in Season 8, so that means he's going to be absent for 15 episodes, it's understandable since Jesse L. Martin has been on the show for such a long time. I know he's working on a new show and I think, honestly, it's just very nice that he's going to be in this season at all. So I'm happy that he's not exiting and obviously as Eric Wallace says, there is always the chance that he could come back and do more episodes and that's why they're not killing him off or anything. And so Deadline goes on to say, when do you think you'll know whether The Flash Season 9 will be the last? Eric says, it's the question I get asked every five minutes, I wish I could answer it, I wish I knew, I hope I will know by the time we start shooting in the fall, I think that's a fair statement, so stay tuned. And so, this is a question that was definitely built up towards because Eric Wallace has been repeatedly talking about a potential end for The Flash and how he's been preparing for it, and so this is just his answer, he thinks if they were going to end the show, he would be told by 
Grant or whoever is going to be leaving the show because there is no way that the CW is cancelling the show. So it definitely would have to be like a mutual agreement like they did for Supergirl and like they did for Arrow to end the show at a certain point. And so we have a couple more questions that we're going to be going over. And Deadline says this. Where are you at exactly with the new season? So Eric replies, I literally just finished the season 8 finale today. This is when they did this interview to get it on air on Wednesday. The season 8 finale is the biggest one we've ever attempted. There's so many special effects. It's incredible. I had a blast writing it and we thought this could be a series finale. So we had this huge, incredible battle between Grant and Tom. So it was incredibly difficult to realize it and get it on the screen, but I'm happy to say that we did. I'm so excited for people to see it. After that, I'm literally taking a few weeks off and it's been a few weeks. This is me talking. And so I'm not going to be thinking about season nine at all. Yes, I do know what the end of season nine is already. And we have multiple big bads next year. We're going to continue our graphic novel format. I don't know how many episodes I've got, quite frankly. So if I get enough episodes, we'll have three graphic novels just like the past year. If I get less, then I'll act accordingly. But there will be at least two graphic novels with at least two separate big bads, one of whom is a blast from the past. Well, there you go. So it seems like one of the big bads is going to be somehow related to a character that we've seen in the past. Whether they are a villain or not, it's going to be a blast from the past, as Eric says. And so, as of this recording, when I'm actually talking to you guys, this has been actually maybe a month or so since he did this interview. So, it's been a while, and I believe he has started on Season 9 as of right now, but he does have plans, as he states here. He knows that Season 9 is going to be ending in a certain way, that there will be multiple big bads next year. He will try for three graphic novels if he gets 20 episodes, but if not, it will be two graphic novels with two big bads. So this was a very good teaser for us. Okay, last couple of questions. Do you know whether Season 9 will feature any kind of crossover event? Wallace says, I don't have a sense yet. That's usually driven by the CW, the network. There are no plans for anything like this at this time, but I might get a call tomorrow. Obviously, this is bad news for Arrowverse fans, but Superman Lois and its showrunner has been hammering this in as well. The fact that they don't have any plans for crossovers yet, and it probably isn't going to happen this season. Okay, so the final two questions go like this. The Flash will surpass Arrow next season as the longest running Arrowverse series on the CW. What does it mean to you to hit that milestone? Eric replies, we'll be at 184, 185 episodes, something like that. Something insane. Given the climate that we're in with short seasons and short orders, it's quite frankly a miracle that I'm so proud to be part of something as special as this. It's something that we as writers, producers and directors and even the studio and the network, something that we take very seriously. There may not be many more shows that we get the chance to run more than 180 episodes, so we're going to try this season 9 to make each one just a home run if possible. Okay, the final question is, are any potential Flash spin-offs being looked at at this point? Eric's reply to this final question is no, because you don't really start looking at spin-offs until you think you're not coming back and I'm not thinking that way. Now, having said that, obviously we've introduced a lot of characters over the last couple of seasons. I would say to the audience, if you have some characters that we have introduced in the last few years that you would want to see in a spin-off, you should write to the CW, but I'm just going to say focus on the Flash right now before I start focusing on anything else. I think this is a very fair answer from Eric because it's true, you don't really think of spin-offs until after and maybe the CW is thinking of some spin-offs. I would say as a fan, Nora and Bart would be my number one pick for a spin-off show, some sort of Flash family spin-off show that is set in the future. I would totally be down for that. So that pretty much does it for this video guys, this has been quite a long video, we went over the whole Deadline article. I think Eric gave some very interesting answers for some very good questions that Deadline was asking in regards to Season 8 and also Season 9 and the future of the show. I think it's very interesting to do with the spin-off specifically and the fact that, you know, his answer to do with the crossovers probably not going to be happening anytime soon. And then also about, you know, Season 9 in general, the big bads that are coming and the plans that they have as of right now. 
But if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new so you don't miss any future videos, and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.